The so-called pause in the temperature of the Earth's surface, no rise since 1997, has been called the biggest problem in climate science. When I wrote about it in late 2007, merely pointing out what the observations were showing, I met with a very polarised response. Some were intrigued, but others didn't have to look at the data to be sure it was, as one knee-jerk reaction put it, wrong, completely wrong. But while the pause started to be mentioned in peer-reviewed literature, the media and prominent climate scientists either ignored it or contemptuously dismissed it. As the years wore on and the Earth's surface did not get any warmer, it became harder and harder to ignore. For a problem at first denied, there are now far more reasons proposed for the pause than can possibly be true. The most cited is that the warming has gone into the oceans, and indeed the oceans are expected to suck up far more energy from the greenhouse effect than the land. But while the oceans have warmed in the past few decades, how much is due to mankind is debatable, and the ocean heat content is not behaving as some expected. The best data we have is from the Argo project. It goes back 10 years and shows no warming in the uppermost layers. If the heat is there, it must be deeper, far harder to detect, and possibly locked away for thousands of years. But there are other explanations, most of them only accounting for a fraction of the cooling needed to produce the pores. Several of them involve the Pacific, either its multi-decadal cycles of temperature, or the trade winds getting stronger, or weaker, both have been suggested. It could be the Atlantic's temperature changes, or its influence on Arctic ice, as in the so-called stadium wave theory. Again, these are only partial explanations. Some say particles from volcanoes have blocked out the sun, yet others blame it on ozone, or on natural variations in water vapour in the stratosphere. Water vapour in the stratosphere is a possibility, but if it can account for only a third of the pores, it will also have to be responsible for a quarter of the warming seen between 1980 and 1998. And some even say it's a coincidence, a chance lining up of errors, but only the ones they like. Could it also be due to data sampling, due to the lack of weather stations in the Arctic? What the pause has done is show us that natural climate variability is more important than we thought and played a role in enhancing global warming before dampening it. And when will the pause end? Nobody knows.